بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم the next thing we'll try to understand the split mac architecture or even we can call it as lightweight access point uh, architecture now if we just go with a quick recap recap of what we discussed in the previous so in the previous we have seen the wireless architecture where we have two different modes of implementations so the first one we have discussed where we don't need any wlc so each and every access point is managed individually in the autonomous mode but here we'll be discussing about the lightweight access point mode or split mac architecture so where we'll be using wlc to control manage multiple access points again practically the scalable solution we can say now what we are doing here is we'll be using a controller based management solution and we call this as wireless lan controllers so we'll be using wlc and with the help of this wlc we are going to manage the multiple access points so these these access points we call them as lightweight access points and you may have hundreds thousands of access points which can be managed by one single wlc okay so the vendor is going to offer you the management system that is the device a separate device and from that device we call it as wlc we are going to centrally monitor and manage the multiple access points now now what happens here is when we are using wlc now whatever the task managed by the access point or whatever the task is divided into two different functions like all the access points will be doing the real time functions so which means the access point will still will be forwarding or will be a point of uh, contact for the client users so all the clients will be connecting to the access points and this access point will be responsible for sending and receiving the wireless signals the messages we call them as uh, beacons or probe messages so the wireless messages it will be sending and receiving which will be used to uh, connect and each and every client will be identified based on the mac address like forwarding to the specific mac just like the switch will do mac based forwarding that is also done by the access point and if there is any kind of encryption probably it is going to do that as well so these are the tasks relating to the real time functions but whereas there are few things which need which uh, can be moved to the wlc now mostly all the management related functions which are not uh, kind of a compulsory uh, for the access point to do so we are moving that management related functions to the controllers now the controllers are again responsible for doing some kind of client authentication because here the access point is not authenticating the users so any any user connects tries to connect to the access point access point will contact the wlc to verify the authentication so probably the authentication or configuring some ssids or applying some quality of service policies or selecting the radio frequency channels or the power levels so these all tasks comes under the management options so what you can do is you can go to the wlc and you can configure all this on the centralized device so whenever you, the access point boots up it's going to contact the uh, wlc and get all this information uh, probably and with the help of the information it can allow the clients to connect so that's how it's going to be that's that's the reason we call it as a split mac architecture because we are splitting the functions of a normal wireless devices into two parts the real time functions handled by the by the access point and whereas the management related functions will be man, will be done by the wlc now again as i said what the controller is going to do so whenever you power on the access point it's going to contact the wlc and the wlc is going to push the network network societies and the security settings like authentication credentials and even if there is any kind of firmware updates you can also uh, do it from the single centralized device instead of doing them individually now the wireless lan controllers the wlc is control the access point as i said and that's the reason technically we call this access point as lightweight access point because it is not doing the complete functions it is still handling the real time functions but whereas most of the management related tasks are shifted to the centralized device wlc 
So that's the reason technically we call it as a lightweight access point. Uh, again, these are like different models. Again, the models, the normal access point models and the lightweight access point models will, will differ again. So if you're using lightweight access point, then you need a WLC because the lightweight access point cannot run on their own. So it, it has to contact the WLC to get its uh, management related options. So basically the lightweight access point cannot work on its own. You have to have uh, WLC compulsory. But whereas in the previous architecture, uh, we, where there is no WLC required, we will be using uh, normal access points over there. So again, what, what we are doing, we are separating the functions of the access point, like all the real-time functions will be managed by, by, by the access point. And whereas all the WLC is going to, is going to uh, control all the management-related functions, and technically, we also call this as split Mac architecture. Now, let's try to see a little bit more uh, functions in detail. What are the functions? Like, as I said, uh, all the functions are divided into two types. The general rule is simple. All the real-time functions will be handled by access point. And all the management-related functions will be handled by the WLC. That's a simple rule you need to understand. So let's try to see what are, what exactly comes under the real time functions. Like one of the function is like sending and receiving the frames. So the access point is going to send out the frames, 8.0.11 frames, and also some messages like beacons. Beacons are like the wireless signal information which is being sent by the access point within the coverage area. And once the client is going to listen to these beacon messages, it is going to send out a probe request saying that I want to join to this SSID because with the help of beacons, it is going to broadcast the SSID. And then with the help of probe messages, it is going to contact the access point. I want to connect. And then it's going to respond back. And then authentication process happens. And then association request, association response. And finally, the connection will be established. So in simple words, we can say the wireless uh, frames or the wireless signals uh, will be controlled or managed by the access point and also the access point is also responsible for identifying the devices based on the mac address just like uh, mac based forwarding uh, this is something handled just like in the switch we have media access control so all those functions uh, automatically come here as well the access point is going to handle them as well apart from that if there is any kind of encryption support then because most of the wireless traffic is has to be encrypted because if, if any attacker is also connecting to the network he can capture the traffic so most of the current uh, products the wireless products we use the data is encrypted so this encryption part is also handled by the access point and these all uh, functions has to stay inside the access point because these are all real-time functions and these has to be handled by the access point. And this has to be done very close to the clients. And the closest device to the client will be access point here. Now, whatever uh, the functions which are not real time, which are not uh, handling, which are not relating to handling the 8.0.11 frames, like management related functions. So these management related functions can be shifted to the WLC. Now with the help of WLC or the controllers, now the controllers will do all the management related functions uh, centrally on this device. And in simple words, we can say with the, with the help of WLC, we are going to manage multiple access points. So you may have hundreds of access points. We can manage them via a single centralized device. Now how it works, now what are the functions it's going to offer? Like, as I said, usually the WLC controls multiple access points, the lightweight access points. And again, uh, when you're using lightweight access point, then you need to, you must have a WLC. Because the lightweight access point, they do only the real time functions and all the management related functions are shifted to the WLC. So, which means if there is no WLC, the lightweight access points are not going to work. So, you must need to have WLC in this architecture. Now, what are the functions it will be doing? Now, 
one of the basic function is like authentication of the users. Like whenever a wireless user, let's say my laptop, I'm connecting to the access point. So whenever you connect, now this access point is going to uh, forward the request. Probably the WLC is going to do the authentication process. So authenticate the user is mostly based on the local user accounts or use some external servers. Depends depends upon the implementations. Apart from that, uh, managing the security policies. Now these security policies are required, especially to define what encryption methods you're going to use and or what what authentication methods you're going to use or which protocols you'll be using so basically you have to define these uh, parameters and this is done on the wlc apart from that selecting the radio frequency channels because each and every access point has to decide what will be the uh, frequency channel it is going to use and again uh, what will be the standard it is going to use like 8.0.11 a b g or whatever the standard it is going to use so these channels will be assigned by the wlc so the wlc is going to assign the channels within that particular frequency automatically and wlc also will ensure that uh, there is no interference of this access point with any other access point because if, if multiple access points are using the same channel, there is a possibility of interference that can also be controlled by the WLC. So according to that, it will be uh, doing that. Additionally, uh, it will also do something called power management. Now the power management is like adjusting the uh, transmitting power by the access point because the access point has to, has to adjust the transmitting power depending upon uh, which exactly suits the environment to provide the maximum coverage so that can also be uh, adjusted from the wlc and additionally handling the roaming related functions because technically when you connect when you have multiple access points when a wireless user is moving from one access point to another access point so we need to make sure that uh, when the when the user is moving from one access point to another access point he, he should not get disconnected and if you are applying some kind of encryption uh, methods or encryption keys should be available when the user is moving between the access points so with the help of wlc it will ensure that when the user are moving between the access points so all the roaming related functions will be handled including the authentication or encryption kind of options so to avoid uh, disconnection means that the user should not get disconnected while he is moving from one access point to another access point like quality of service reservation so if you want to give any priority for specific traffic or you want to do some kind of reservations we can do that from a centralized place that is from WLC